Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Wonder Snatch. It's November, but my body still thinks it's Snatchoween, so thank you for clicking on this video to see my Hozo Teratoma makeup. Hozo Teratoma is an amazing South Korean queen on Dragler Season 4, and she's got this iconic spooky makeup which, I've, which I'm going to try to recreate today, alright? And at the same time, I'm going to do my dermatology and drag to talk about her name, teratoma, what it means, stem cells, and tumors of the skin. But first, let me get into my classic Wonder Snatch look. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm in full drag, ready to paint over this to become Hoso Teratoma, and I'm going to do a Tomia-inspired look as well, alright? And if that's something you want to see, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel, and ring that bell for post notifications. alright? I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Alright, okay, so I'm gonna get out of drag really quickly now. <laughs> this is gonna be Hosa Teratoma meets Wonder Snatch. Hosa Teratoma just did a collab with Rock'em Sakura, okay, and they look, both look amazing. Uh, Rock'em Sakura did a spin on Hosa Teratoma's makeup where she did like her, her usual wavy crease on her makeup and really made it her own. So I'm gonna try to do it my way also to do a Wonder Snatch slash Hoso Teratoma slash Junji Ito make inspired makeup. Okay, let's get these lashes off. I'm gonna get out of this dress and I'll be right back. Alright, okay, so I've got my outfit off. Now I'm just going to go in with my Hoso Teratoma look. Okay, so I'm, I can basically draw over most of this. The eyes I think I have to redo. So let's take those lashes off. And redo these eyes. So Hoso Teratoma's eyes, you see this white under eye that I do, she brings it all the way down there. Okay, so I have to redo all of this. Her makeup is really, really cool. I mean, it's a pity that some people call her Spooky Trixie or Spooky Kimchi, but I think she's really, really made her, her makeup her own. Make sure the brow cover doesn't come off. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the usual colours, okay, of a blue lid and everything. Hosa Teratoma also makes a lot of uh, very sharp angles. It looks like she, her, her skin is like pinned back. Okay, I'm going to fix these brows and I'll be right back. Alright, so <laughs> just redid my eyebrows. I look like a real mess now, <laughs> if this isn't scary enough. So now I'm just going to trace out my eye like um, what Hosa Teratoma does. Okay, she draws it down all the way there. and um, she's not too bothered about making it too asymmetrical. Okay, and her name, Hoso Teratoma, um, she says in this video that it's a contraction. Hoso is a contraction of Homo Sonyun. Homo Sonyun, which is gay boy. <laughs> and Teratoma is basically, um, what she says here, is a tumour with eyes and hair and all sorts of crazy stuff. Okay, and she named herself after Teratoma because she had lymphoma as a kid. Okay, she was treated for lymphoma with chemotherapy. Maybe not so far out. My wig does not extend that far. So what exactly is a teratoma? So a teratoma is uh, the, from the Greek word monstrous, terra, toma. Oma means tumor, okay, or growth of any kind. Okay, and here, um, Rockham Sakura and uh, Hoso actually say that it's like a parasitic twin. It's not really a parasitic twin because uh, teratoma is usually so disorganized and so messed up that it can't be viable, okay? It, it can't live. Even though it, sometimes it has brain tissue, it's not functional. So it's never a parasitic twin, okay? It's just a mass of tissue that forms sometimes. Fill all this in with my clown white. Yeah, so teratomas are fascinating things, okay? They said correctly, um, teratomas sometimes contain hair, eyes, bone, weird parts of the body that don't usually go together. And what makes it so special is that a teratoma contains usually more than one, one cell type. Okay, when you look at most tumours, okay, I'm going to go into tumours of the skin later, it's usually only one cell type that goes off and does its own thing and starts growing abnormally, okay? And that's why cancers are so rare because, you know, this escape from growth control is not a very common occurrence. So when it happens, it usually happens from, let's say, mutations or defects in the cell that allow it to grow more abnormally. Okay, and most of the time it's benign. Most of the time these growths are completely benign and they don't kill you. They require extra mutations to become malignant, okay, or become something that can spread or kill you. Those require other characteristics. Growth itself, not really. A teratoma is weird because 
several cell types exist in there, okay? It's not just one cell type. So sometimes you get hair or eyes or um, bone and everything is all mixed up, okay? And this is because what they've discovered is that teratomas occur from a cell that is much, much earlier in its development. Okay, and then she sets it with white. So these teratomas used to be medical curiosities, okay? The most common place you found a teratoma before was actually the ovaries, okay? Where the egg cells, um, which, you know, contain all the genetic information capable of making a human, kind of like go a bit crazy, okay? And they start differentiating into different cell types, okay? And this is what we call a dermoid cyst, okay? So sometimes women with pain or something get an ultrasound and they see this thing with hair and teeth and everything inside. That's a dermoid cyst and it's very commonly found in ovaries. So doctors used to remove these and put them in jars and show them at, you know, at freak shows and stuff like that. An embryo, a fetus, when, you, when, when it's fertilized, it will actually, at the very, very beginning, at the early stages, okay, it's completely undifferentiated. It can become anything. It actually forms three, what we call germ layers, okay? The endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. And these, and these form different parts of the body. So ectoderm usually forms the skin and the brain. The mesoderm forms your bones and your muscle. And the endoderm forms things like your lungs and your gut. Okay, so whenever you have a very, very early cell that is capable of producing all three layers, uh, these are able to form teratomas, okay, because when they branch off, they can become anything. So it becomes a big mass of, you know, stuff from the ectomeso and endoderm. When researchers realized that this was what teratomas were, they started using teratomas to, to study embryos, to study human development. And this is actually what brought about, you know, a lot of the embryonic stem cell research nowadays. When they grew teratomas in the lab, they found that these teratomas actually produce certain proteins. And when they used these proteins to look for cells in the human body or in an embryo, they found the cells that were most likely to, to form teratomas or your embryonic stem cells. And research in embryonic stem cells nowadays actually has led to discoveries of many, many things like drugs and clues about how a human develops and even sometimes even cancer treatment. So now I'm doing the wing. It goes almost straight up. So embryonic stem cells, when they are able to form so many different cell types, is we, we call them pluripotent. They have the ability to form many cell types. And these days, what we call a teratoma assay is a test for pluripotency. Whenever researchers want to um, test whether a cell is pluripotent or whether it has stem cell characteristics, they inject it into the back of the mouse and if it forms a teratoma, that like when they take it out and they look and they find things like teeth and eyes and stuff like that, um, they say that this cell, the original cell, was a stem cell, a good stem cell because it was pluripotent. So far the steps are pretty tricksy Mattel. This has to be some of this white. Okay, so that's Hoso Teratoma's name. And she calls herself a drag yokai. And yokai are Asian monsters and She's a big fan of Asian horror and Asian monsters. And so am I. And now she fills in these bits with pink. Okay, so she has pink and pink here. So it looks like the eyes are being pulled down. Let's draw in these lines first. So I was looking at some of her old makeup tutorials. She used to draw a circle down here so that this is like a eyeball and this whole thing is one eye. But now she's changed the makeup such that there are two parallel lines going down like this. Okay, like that. Okay, and it looks as if her eyes are being pulled with like, you know, hooks or something to either side. And then she fills in the rest here with like pink and, pinks and reds. Almost like make it look tissuey so it doesn't have to be really precise. So I'm just using a whole bunch of pinks and reds. Okay, I'm just going to fill in the rest of this foundation now that I wiped off so it doesn't look so crazy. Okay, so what about tumours in the skin like I promised? Okay, so tumours can either be benign or malignant, okay, and they can arise from any layer of the skin. And as I mentioned earlier, most of the skin is made out of your ectoderm, that's the top layer of the skin, and anything below comes from your mesoderm, okay, so the fibroblasts, the dermis, okay, and everything comes from the mesoderm. Okay, there are special cells that come from what we call the neural crest. Okay, the neural crest forms things like your melanocytes, pigment cells. I've already done a video on melanoma, okay, and melanoma is basically when these cells become malignant, okay, or when they become cancer-causing. 
So today I'm going to talk about on this side, benign tumors and this side, malignant tumors, okay? So these don't kill you and these will. Melanocytes or your pigment cells, when they're benign, they form things like moles, okay? Or intradermal nevi, okay? And these are very common. But when they do turn malignant, they become melanoma. And the naming of these cells are usually quite straightforward. So in the epidermis or in the ectoderm, if something is malignant, you call it a carcinoma. If it's not, you don't, you don't hear carcinoma. In the mesoderm, when something's malignant, you call it a sarcoma. I'm not going to be too bothered by the contour because the contour is really, really from all the graphic lines and everything. So I'm just going to set this now and forget it. We're going to go over all this with black later, but let's go in with the crease. So she's got really, really high, really, really crazy crease. And I'm going to use the same blues that I did for, for my previous look. Okay, and she really goes ham. Other cells of your... Um, epidermis are your keratinocytes and when the keratinocytes become form a tumor when they grow abnormally they form things like papillomas okay when you get infected with a wart or HPV you get warts okay or sometimes people just get skin tags and these are all benign okay but if they do become cancer causing they form your things like your basal cell carcinoma or your squamous cell carcinoma Hosoteratoma doesn't bother too much about symmetry, so that's quite good. So I'm just whacking it all on. But she does blend a little bit. I'm going to work on this crease a little bit, and I'll be <laughs> right back after I cut it. Whew. Okay, so I cut the crease, and I'm going in to outline all this with black. I added a little bit more white there. I'm going to need to set that too. Okay, and then I'm going to outline all this with black, and then draw in my brows. Really thick eyeliners. So don't, don't be scared. And now my brows. Her brows just basically <laughs> go all the way up here. It's a good thing she's not a stickler for symmetry. Ooh. This lower. Ooh. Now I'm going to do her really, really insect-like cheek, okay? So she basically just does a blush all the way down, like this huge, massive thing. Okay, I'm going to use the red from the Jade Thurwell. All the way down. Right up to the mouth, okay? Okay, so next, out of the epidermis, the dermis, the next layer, you have your fibroblasts, okay, which make up your dermis, and these produce your collagen. Okay, when they form benign tumors, okay, you have things like your fibrous papules, okay, just like little lumps in the skin. Or even in wound healing, you get keloids, okay, and these are benign. Sometimes you get these things called dermatofibromas, which are basically these like almost it's almost like scar tissue right underneath the skin. It's little lumps that people find occasionally. These can become malignant. They become this thing called a dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance or DFSP. And that's basically the malignant form of your fibroblast. Now a darker color, I'm using this Angel of the North. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Other things like your nerves forms neurofibromas. Okay, so for, for, for a patient with neurofibromatosis, they get all these lumps all, all over and these are actually benign. When they become malignant, they become neurofibrosarcomas. And now dip into the black. Just touch here. This is actually quite fun. <laughs> you don't usually get to use so much eyeshadow and so much color. Okay, and here she does, she cleans up this little bit, this fangy bit here. I've got a fresh makeup remover and I'm just gonna clean up around this. And she does a little, this, she's got this little thing here going. And then we clean up around that with our foundation. Okay, what other tumors can you find in your dermis? So you've got fat in your dermis. Fat sometimes call, form these little lumps called lipomas and they're quite benign. But if they become cancerous, they become liposarcomas. Blood vessels can cause these things called cherry angiomas or they become angiosarcomas if they become malignant. Set that. A little bit of the black, just to 
intensify this here. And now her lips, her lips are really, really crazy and asymmetrical. I'm going to keep the red lip in there and just going to draw around it. Okay, before I go into lips, I'm just going to blend all this out here. Go in further and blend all these out. If they're red and pink. Okay, I'm just going to blend a little bit more. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm going to go in and now draw this crazy lip. Huge Cupid's bow. Okay, her makeup is quite versatile and it does lend itself to a lot of different looks. I mean, she really looked great in that vampire, the Nosferatu beach party thing. Okay, I'm going to fill that in with my black. Another very interesting tumour of the skin are your lymphomas, okay, or your tumours of the immune cells. Okay, so usually immune cells, because they don't usually have an organ or a little place where they collect unless they're lymph nodes, they can actually present as a rash, okay? So, for example, benign ones are things like your pseudo-lymphomas, okay? These are just or lymph nodes, okay? Sometimes they're just lymphoid tissue that proliferates in the skin and they're benign, but they become lymphomas, okay? Or sometimes what we call mycosis pancoides when they become malignant, and this can actually present as a rash, okay? So it's very, very tricky sometimes. All right, let's fill that in. And blend it in with the red. So I'm just going to blend that in a little bit more. <laughs> uh, this is great. I think I look pretty much like Hoso. And I'm going to clean up that lip. I even made fake tea. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to get into my final look and I'll be right back. And this is the finished look. Hoso Teratoma meets Wonder Snatch. <laughs> I think her makeup is really, really fun. And it's pretty iconic, I think. Oh, my teeth. My polymorph plastic came in. I tried to do a tutorial for this, but you know... It didn't come out very well, so if you want a tutorial for how I make these teeth, leave down in the comments below. <laughs> Alright, so that's my whole tutorial for my look, and I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> oh no, great. They fit too snugly, so I, I can't take them out. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and ring that bell for post notifications, alright? <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye! Fine as well, this makeup. Check out my other videos. I did a collab here with Wink1818 when I turned myself into a demon <laughs> and with Ariana Condor when I turned myself into Pennywise, they're real. See ya! Yeah.